Now, good morning to everybody who ever is on the platform. I was uh, given to understand that it is most of the most of the gentlemen and ladies and who are going to join on the platform. They are most of them are practicing advocates. So I have kept that in mind in just sharing my views and thoughts on the basis of actual facts and the actual cases which has gone on recently in the Supreme Court. And two judgments have been delivered, which has prompted me to share my views on this subject. That is interpretation of conflicting regulatory laws. The issue which I want to address is that there are certain subjects and disciplines in the life of a couple of professions where the parliament has framed regulatory laws where they are required to register themselves as professionals and after they obtain their registrations they are also required to be watched for their professional conduct in that if there are allegations of committing misconduct professional misconduct then those the statutory authorities as regulators under the regulatory laws are also empowered to take care of it and also impose punishments for those misconduct now couple of those such laws which immediately come to mind starting from the advocates act dealing with the advocates going ahead with the doctors under the indian medical council act dentists under the dentistry act architects under the architecture act nurses under the nursing act pharmacists under the pharmacy act and the list goes on on the one hand these are the laws which are stipulating that the professionals that is those who are willing to practice as professionals in these disciplines they must get registered first then they can practice that profession while they are carrying out their professional activities in whatever capacity they are under the watch of those regulatory bodies which are statutorily provided by acts of parliaments and they are also empowered to impose punishment for misconduct now if we proceed from this stage that is the law requires the registration of the professionals and also to watch their conduct we are required to go back a little in relation to those very special disciplines that if a body who is given the responsibility that you will register a professional for a special subject then the law invariably as a complete code also go back in that they will provide the course curriculum they will decide what should be the basic knowledge of the gentleman or a person who wishes to qualify in that particular special discipline what should be his prior qualification for seeking admission to such professional courses thereafter what would be the eligibility and qualification of the people who are going to teach them what would be the basic minimum infrastructure which shall be required to impart such education for that special discipline thereafter what would be the standard of examination which should also test their whether test them whether they have been able to secure that education and qualification or not if they qualify and obtain a qualification which is recognized by that very body then they become entitled for registration in that discipline to practice as a professional for that subject after they start as professionals 
then their conduct is also subject to review by the disciplinary bodies under those enactments and the action is taken now if i put it in a different way that is a particular like let us take the case of a person who wishes to practice as an advocate so the bar council of india under the advocates act is constituted as a statutory body as a regulator it will lay down that what would be the minimum qualification which a person must possess at what standard what division what marks by which he or she would be entitled to seek admission in the llb course thereafter the bar council of india would also be saddled with the responsibility of ensuring that where that legal education shall be imparted who shall impart that education what would be their qualification the next step in every such special discipline then comes to is that what would be the course curriculum which would be required to be taught how many years course would that be whether it should be annual courses or biannual semesters what would be the level of examination and who would be the examiner whether it would be an internal exam or an external exam by the university and thereafter the qualification would be required to be recognized by that council and then you can after obtaining the qualification seek a registration let us take the case of dentist uh, the medical council act similarly similar to all other laws the eligibility conditions are laid down infrastructural requirements are laid down course curriculum is laid down the teacher eligibility conditions are laid down the examination standards are laid down and thereafter the institutions who are able to meet their marks are given recognition the recognition is in relation to a particular admission capacity for giving admissions because the admission is relatable to the infrastructure which is provided on proportionate basis and then the registration takes place on obtaining the recognized qualification now in this background for last more than two decades a large number of cases reached every court including punjab haryana high court bombay high court and delhi high court various high courts after 1987 the reason for the disputes between three bodies specially i am naming that there were three bodies specially one was on the subject of architecture the second was on the subject of pharmacy and the dispute was with regard to all india council for technical education now all these three are regulators the architecture council is a regulator in the special discipline of architecture the pharmacy council is once again a statutory regulator who regulates the conduct of the education process on the special subject of pharmacy similarly all india council for technical education which became a statutory body in the year 1987 by a parliament made law became a regulator for the technical education the common understanding by a common man with regard to aict which came into existence in the year 1987 was that it would relate it would relate itself to the courses of engineering the subject of engineering and it will restrict itself to discipline of engineering to and to regulate it the problem arose that the aict act having come later point of time that is it was brought into existence in the year 1987 as compared to this law of 1987 the pharmacy act was of 1948 and the architecture act is of 1972 the pharmacy act and the architecture act they cover within their uh, statutory regime not only 
imparting of those special courses, but also for the registration of professionals under those law and also to watch their professional conduct after they are registered. You would please examine and keep this in mind, even from your general knowledge in our daily walk of life, that in so far as engineers are concerned, there is no registration of engineers with anybody. In other words, the, the, in, for a practicing the profession of engineering as an engineer, there is no requirement to register with any council, like advocates, like doctors, like dentists, like pharmacists. <coughs> there is no watch on them, on their professional activities after they have obtained their qualification. They can start to work as engineers on just acquiring their qualification without there being any requirement for registration with any professional body. When this situation came after 1987, the problem started arising because of a very wide definition in Section 2G of the AICT Act, which came into existence in 1987, of the nomenclature technical education. So the definition in the AICT Act of technical education included the subject of pharmacy and architecture within it. In other words, if somebody has to see what would be technical education for the purposes of AICT Act by referring to the provision of Section 2G, there is no doubt at all that the subject of pharmacy and architecture was included into it. The AICT being emboldened with the definition of technical education assumed and proceeded on that basis very, very aggressively that it is, since it is 1987 law, which is again, according to them, is a special law on technical education. It is in later in point of time. In the definition, it includes the subject of pharmacy as well as architecture. It will have all the jurisdiction to take care of every aspect of architecture as well as pharmacy council for which two special separate professional bodies were in existence and they were also created by the parliamentary laws. The second aspect which came into existence was whether the principle of implied repeal, this is a very important issue, whether the principle of implied repeal would apply to the Pharmacy Act and the Architecture Act after a special law, according to AICT, that AICT is a special law, after a special law on technical education was brought into existence in the year 1987, when the Architecture Council came into existence in 1972 and Pharmacy Council came into existence in the year 1948. The another issue which was engaged and was involved in understanding of this problem was that once the later law, which is claimed to be a special law, takes care of the subjects which are in existence in relation to two separate other special laws, where the argument of implied repeal is raised, it is always raised on the pedestal that when the parliament brought into existence the AICT Act, the parliament was fully conscious and aware that it was the author of the earlier two enactments and it still felt the necessity of providing another body, empowering it to take care of the subject of architecture as well as pharmacy. This argument was specifically raised by the AICT before the Supreme Court. There are two judgments. One judgment is, both judgments are, uh, one is rendered, the earlier judgment is rendered in 2019 and the subsequent judgment is recently rendered in March 2020. The 2019 judgment resolved the conflict of Architecture Act with the AICT and the 2020 judgment resolved the conflict of the Pharmacy Act with, in, with reference to AICT. 
Now, what has happened was once the AICT assumed that because the subject of architecture and pharmacy is included within its definition, and it has powers to frame its regulation to take care of all subjects which are included in its definition, they proceeded to frame a large number of regulations as subordinate legislation for which they were empowered and framed various regulations both for the subject of architecture and for the subject of pharmacy. The net result of their proceeding further, assuming that they are also empowered to take care of these two subjects, the problem, the disputes we started coming to court for if the pharmacy council on examination of infrastructure of a particular pharmacy college has approved a particular capacity of admissions in a particular pharmacy course, suddenly the next day you will find that the AICT has now fixed a intake capacity, which is double than the intake capacity fixed by the pharmacy council. Same thing was happening with regard to the architecture, that if architecture council has fixed a capacity of intake of admission in a particular architecture college as 50 per year, the next day you somebody would find that AICT has fixed the infrastructure capacity of that college to 100. The second dispute which had arisen was that whereas the architecture and pharmacy council were not at all ready to accept that of the same infrastructure, same teaching faculty, you cannot have two shifts because then you are doubling your intake capacity without doubling your infrastructure, the AICT proceeded to give you double admission on the basis and the argument of that we are permitting them double shifts. This, this was the difficulty insofar as the admissions are concerned. The second problem which had arisen was with regard to the regulatory mechanism for laying down the requirement for infrastructure, requirement for admission, requirement for examination, requirement of eligibility of teachers, etc. And since in the subject of architecture, there were two bodies. One is the architecture council fixing its own norm, AICT taking over that we will are in power to fix our own norm. So the conflicting regulations came into existence with conflicting and varying intake capacity, varying infrastructure requirement, varying course content, varying examination standard, varying teacher eligibility condition, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the colleges, both in the case of architecture as well as pharmacy, naturally, if their admission capacity is getting increased, they all stood uh, beside the Architecture Council of India, uh, sorry, the AICT, and started reaching courts for protecting and continuing the admission capacity, which had been fixed by, by AICT for them, which was in all cases more than the admission capacity which had been fixed both by Architecture Council for Architecture Colleges and the Pharmacy Council for the Pharmacy College. The judgments which started coming in, there were conflicting judgments. There was a judgment in the case of pharmacy by the Punjab Haryana High Court and a division and judgment of the Bombay High Court, whereas the Punjab High Court held that the AICT would rule. The Bombay High Court held that no, the AICT will not rule. It is the special law in relation to architecture which will rule. Therefore, these cases eventually reach the Supreme Court. Initially, initially, both the group of cases were listed together. That is cases in relation to architecture colleges as well as the cases in relation to pharmacy council. They were all listed together. But somehow for some reason, because various colleges were reaching, some were asking for interim orders. So the cases got detagged and eventually the final airing with regard to architecture case was taken up first. A judgment was rendered. Thereafter, the pharmacy council versus AICT, the case was taken up in March and a separate judgment was rendered dealing with the specific contention raised in the case of architecture because there was one basic difference between the Architecture Act and the Pharmacy Council Act was that whereas there was a non substantive provision that was Section 17 of the Architecture Act which provided for a non substantive provision in that act which similar provision was not available in the Pharmacy Act. 
which gave ammunition to the AICT to in the second round to raise a separate argument on that basis. Now coming back to these conflicts which had started in the court, now let us see what, what was the legal issue involved. The first issue which was raised before the Supreme Court was that whether the AICT on the, on the subject of technical education is a special law or general law. Because in so far as subject of architecture and subject of pharmacy was concerned, it was not very difficult to argue that they are special subjects having a special law. Technical education, one may argue, is also a special law on technical education because education as a field can be a general field. But when you start picking up specific special subjects, then the law which you deal with those special subjects should also get the status of special laws. So therefore, the question which arose was whether the architecture law, where it would not be very difficult to say that it's a special law, and AICT Act, if it is a general law, then whether the Architecture Act will prevail or the, or the AICT Act will prevail. And while deciding this issue, the most important aspect was which law is in later point of time, because that was the threshold argument, both in, both in the cases of Architecture Council as well as Pharmacy Council, raised by the AICT, that we have been brought into existence in 1987. It cannot be said that the parliament was not conscious of the existence of the Pharmacy Act and the Architecture Act when the 1987 AICT Act was brought into existence. If there was no empowerment of the AICT on the subject of architecture and the pharmacy, there was no need or occasion for the parliament to include the subject of architecture and the discipline of pharmacy in the definition of technical education. Now, there is one more aspect that when I said that these are now regulatory laws and there is a conflict, can there be a harmonization of these laws? Can we protect both the laws that is architecture act and the pharmacy act on the one hand and AICT act on the other hand? Because that is the basic tool which the courts have used to save the laws because one of the principles is that when the parliament brings into existence some law, they are assumed to be valid and within the jurisdiction of the legislature. They should be required to be protected given its meaning and also allowed to operate. Now, if that is the basic fundamental uh, discipline in the interpretation of the statutory regime, then can it be said that AICT will have nothing to do with the pharmacy or architecture even when its definition includes it? Or pharmacy council and the architecture council will have exclusive jurisdiction on their respective subjects. These were the areas which were required to be resolved by the Supreme Court. Now one aspect which I would request you to kindly observe and keep in mind that in so far as AICT is concerned, as I pointed out in the beginning, there is no provision for registration of either the architects or the pharmacists under the AICT Act. This is the basic, one of the basic difference between the statutory scheme which was incorporated in the Architecture Act for the architects as well as the pharmacists for the pharmacy act. The, the registration on obtaining a recognized qualification by an architect under the Architecture Act, enabling him and entitling him to seek a registration, and then his professional conduct thereafter under the eyes of the professional body, same in the case of pharmacy, is not in existence under the AICT Act. Number two, except for the definition of technical education in Section 2G, there is no other statutory provision dealing with architecture or pharmacy in any other substantive provision of the AICT Act. There is nothing. The only thing was what the AICT developed was that this subject has been added into our jurisdiction. We have been given the jurisdiction to frame subordinate legislation by framing regulation. 
we have framed a regulation in relation to infrastructure etc for both the disciplines of pharmacy and the and the architecture therefore whatever law they are they take the character and status of a law we are as legal as pharmacy council or the architecture council the when the matter in the supreme court so the supreme court said now we have to first of all examine the statutory schemes of the enactments of architecture as well as the pharmacy council on one hand and the aict on the other they went into the statutory scheme provision by provision of both the enactments it was seen in those enactments of architecture as well as the pharmacy that every aspect is more or less dealt with by the substantive provisions of the enactment itself for an example what would be the eligibility what would be the requirement of registration what would be punishment on misconduct etc are all provided in the substantive provisions of the act including the fact that after a basic qualification which is a recognized qualification either in architecture or the pharmacy is secured by a candidate he gets registration under those two enactment whichever special higher qualification he or she secures thereafter that also is required to be registered and entered against the name of the candidate for that also there are specific provisions in the in the in those enactment the second aspect was what should the court do can it interpret by harmonious construction provisions of enactment which are covering the same field in a manner which virtually render the working unworkable that is if one council says your admission would be 50 the next morning the new council will say your admission are 100 now please take the situation which arose before the supreme court that aict has given a capacity admission capacity of 100 for one college in architecture as against the admission capacity of 50 fixed by the architecture council similarly in the case of pharmacy 100 admission intake capacity given by aict whereas 50 admissions are given by the pharmacy council what happens after those 100 admissions each in the architecture council on one hand and pharmacy council on the other hand when they approach after obtaining the qualification for registration the uh, pharmacy council will say sorry sir the uh, qualification which you have acquired i have not recognized it i have recognized it only for 50 you are 50 first to 100 candidate i can't give you registration aict has no power to give registration there is no provision now where would that candidate go to practice as a professional so the principle of harmonious construction was creating a situation where the aict act was becoming unworkable and was unnecessarily going to create a working problem in relation to carrying out of the scheme of the architecture act as well as the pharmacy council act in this in this the only issue which came up was how do we decide how do we decide this objection of later law that the aict act is in 1987 the both the enactments of architecture which is 1972 and pharmacy which is 1948 how do you get out of this so as to ensure that the pharmacy council carries on its activities where both pharmacy as well as the architecture are held to be complete code in their statutory scheme which also include registration and professional conduct after registration which is completely missing in the aict act therefore what the court came to the conclusion both under the in the architecture act and the pharmacy council act was that if we go through very specifically in both the enact schemes of the enactments then they are so comprehensive in the special subjects of architecture as well as pharmacy now first of all what they decided was that pharmacy and the architecture are special discipline and are special subject number 1 number 
both in their specific enactments are comprehensive enough which deal with every aspect including from the eligibility condition to take admission in the professional course of ar architecture and, and pharmacy the course curriculum the eligibility conditions of teacher the examination standard etc etc and even in till the stage of watching your professional conduct after you have obtained the registration on the other hand aict it came to light is only in its constitution gets a member from the pharmacy council one member comes from the pharmacy council now one member of the pharmacy council which goes into the constitution of aict does not make it a professional body on the special subject of pharmacy similarly it does not become a specialized body on the subject of architecture and it is extremely important that the professional conduct must be allowed to be a judge by the peers in the profession who also are practitioners you cannot say a clerk or a babu will decide how whether the advocate has acted in a particular manner which is held to be ethical or correct or not it has to be left to the peers and the professionals of that very subject the pharmacy council and the architecture council on the other hand are constituted by experts in those very disciplines professionals who have got registration in those very disciplines they get elected and come to constitute the pharmacy council they are the peers in those two subjects now the only principle which the supreme court followed was that on these exhaustive examination of the schemes of the architecture act and the pharmacy act on the one hand and aict act on the other it came to a categorical conclusion that the architecture act on the subject of architecture is a special law similarly pharmacy act on the subject of pharmacy is a special law aict even when it deals with technical education is a general law for the purposes of architecture and pharmacy it is not a special law since it is not a special law which is aict therefore it was later in point of time will not have any bearing and that therefore there will not be any acceptability to argument of implied repeal implied repeal of the architecture act and the pharmacy act in 1987 when the aict act was brought in and one principle which the supreme court relied on an english judgment was the vera cruz principle where it was held that if a subsequent law refers to the subjects which are already covered by earlier special laws then you cannot apply the principle of implied repeal and the word used through a side wind there must be specific provisions regarding repeal of a special law on a special subject which may be prior in time this principle has been consistently followed by various benches of the supreme court now from 1964 onwards till today where they have held that whenever there is conflict between different kind of law where one is a special law even if special law is later in point of time so sorry to bother you uh, people are just posting the next principle harmonious construction principle they have understood the second principle what you said they say just kindly uh, revisit that and elaborate it the second principle you have said on the principles of harmonious construction then the second okay, principle i am coming, coming exactly on that now right. on harmonious construction what we understand is that whenever there is a there perceived or seeming to be the conflict between two legislation or two provision of different legislation then please make them work please make their working possible in such, in such a manner that they are not held redundant these are two cases and please mind it i am going to stress on it where the supreme court says specifically that a situation has come into existence on the principle of applicability of the unworkability concept that if you allow two statutory bodies on the same discipline it will only create havoc in the practical ground reality it will not be workable so in the name of harmonious construction when the argument is raised 
the supreme court said that the harmonious construction would only in this manner that aict act will remain in existence the architecture council act will remain in existence the pharmacy council act will remain in existence but in so far as definition of technical education is concerned in section 2g of the aict act the supreme court said the the nomenclature of architecture as well as pharmacy will deserve to be treated as deleted from the definition of technical education they have said so in so many words and i must tell you one thing that in 2018 again certain interim order which were passed by certain high courts in the case uh, for permitting the higher intake in various architecture and pharmacy uh, colleges which were fixed by aict interim orders were challenged and they were brought before the supreme court one of the bench while disposing of the slp is against the interim order in relation to pharmacy made a very specific observation that a time has come where the legislature must revisit on the definition of technical education and consider dropping the word pharmacy from the definition of 2g this 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 uh, interim this slp against an interim order was disposed of by one paragraph thereafter the matter was placed before the concerned two ministries because the pharmacy council was under the health ministry and the aict is under the ministry of human resources development after the supreme court made this observation the matter was brought to a committee meeting which was which included both these honorable minister they said and in principle they accepted that the supreme court observation should be respected and having regard to the number of disputes which have arisen and have come to the courts in relation to working of aict and the pharmacy and the architecture the disputes which have come into existence have actually created a situation where the parliament must revisit and in principle the government of india decided that the subject of architecture as well as the subject of pharmacy will be in principle excluded and deleted from the definition of technical education in the aict act this was this order which i said was passed in 2018 a meeting was held and this this in principle decision was put in the minutes in the pending du, du, during the interregnum till the time the parliament ev eventually amends the law it was also decided that the pharmacy council and the aict council they will work together they will work together in carrying out their activities and and will get separated only after the amendment is carried out the this this fact was also placed before the supreme court when the pharmacy council matter was uh, before it the architecture council matter was decided and it was held that we are now holding in the name of uh, uh, rejecting the argument of harmonious construction that this subject of architecture will be de get deleted from the definition of the technical education when the pharmacy council matter came in the supreme court specifically requested the central government to respond to them that you have taken the decision in 2018 that you will delete it why the amendment has not taken place so the supreme court was informed by the central government that the process is on for variety of reason the amendment has not been achieved but it is likely to be achieved very soon and the resolve of the government that they would be deleted from the definition the supreme court took it on record and they said we can't wait uh, till the time the amendment is made they followed the earlier judgment of architecture and recorded the statement made on behalf of the central government and proceeded to hold the same thing that the word of pharmacy will also be treated as deleted from the definition of technical education in the aict act and then also they held that all those pharmacy colleges where the additional intake had been permitted by the aict over and above the intake which had been permitted by the pharmacy council and similarly in the architecture council all those colleges will go back to the respective council and will invite them to refix their 
intake capacity for the future years how were the students who had stood admitted and had undergone and completed their courses it has been directed by the supreme court that the respective council that is architecture as well as the pharmacy even when the students had been admitted beyond the capacity is fixed by them but that fixation was also by another statutory body namely aict those council are well advised to grant them registration so that they can practice their profession so the crux of the entire thing came out to be that it is not necessary that these the seeming to be a special law which has point which is later in point of time should be assumed to have displaced the earlier special laws number 1 number 2 the harmonious construction may also invite a situation where the act is saved but the definition clause is denuded of a particular subject which is otherwise covered by a special law so these are the two conclusions which have come from these two judgments of the supreme court which which vera cruz is the judgment of that english principle which is also dealt with in detail by the supreme court and if you permit me i just wish to read para 71 of the judgment in the case of uh, pharmacy council of india versus dr s k toshniwal education trust which is 2020 scc online supreme court 296 i'll just read one paragraph for the benefit of all of us in the case of hari shankar jain the supreme court had an occasion to consider the maximum generally especially of us non derogant the relevant portion of paragraph 8 and 9 are as under the maximum generally especially was non derogant is quite well known the rule flowing from the maxim has been explained in mary seward and owner of vera cruz which was judgment delivered in 1894 now this is a relevant portion which i wish to invite your attention we have already shared it on the screen for your uh, just convenience yes, the team has already posted it now kindly see this this portion which is just above para 9 in 14.2 just come to para 8 mary seward and owner of vera cruz i want to please invite your attention to next four lines now if anything be certain if you have got it i just want to read these four lines yes it's uh, it's already being displayed yes sir now if anything be certain it is this that where there are general words in a later act capable of reasonable and sensible application without extending them to subject specially dealt with by earlier legislation you are not to hold that earlier and special legislation indirectly repealed altered or derogated from merely by force of such general words without any indication of a particular intention to do so now let me just uh, take two minutes on this that architecture and pharmacy council are special enactments they cover in exhaustive nature two special subjects of pharmacy as well as architecture the word pharmacy and architecture as general words only in the definition of a subsequent act without there being a specific word for repeal of earlier special law then there is no repeal of earlier special law the principle of generally a specially but non derogant will not apply there will not be any implied repeal these are the four lines this is the vera cruz principle which has been applied and now we are having a situation where the subject of pharmacy shall be regulated only by the pharmacy council the subject of architecture shall be regulated only by the architecture council there is no implied repeal of these two enactment the jurisdiction of the aict there is no jurisdiction in fact in relation to uh, pharmacy council they gave various proposals the aict they said all right what you do is supreme court they gave proposal kindly permit pro uh, pharmacy council only to conduct diploma courses don't permit them higher courses then they said all right the institution fixation of intake you give it to us course content they can lay down professional conduct they can watch we will not do it 
so they gave various proposal of distributing certain aspects in relation to these special subject and eventually the supreme court said sorry we would not be doing a good thing a correct thing by permitting two specialized body on the same subject which will only create a confusion and on the basis of the number of litigation which i read them they came to the conclusion that harmonious construction in a manner by distribution certain aspects for the specialized counsel certain aspect for the aict they rejected they rejected the argument of implied repeal totally and they came to the conclusion that the harmonious construction principle would not apply and the subjects of architecture and pharmacy in the definition provision of section 2g of the aict act it shall be deemed to be deleted from that provision because the moment you delete these two subject the entire dispute uh, disappear because the aict will continue to govern the engineering colleges the pharmacy colleges etc for profession of pharmacy will be regulated by the pharmacy council who will have its own peers similarly in the case of architecture so this is how the supreme court has resolved resolve the conflict between three regulatory bodies and having three special subjects question sir if any question is there yes sir so uh, uh, i will just share the board how we go about uh, we don't unmute anybody uh, anybody who wants to ask the question they will post it on the chat box so they will post the uh, question i will read it for your convenience if everything is decided by bci regarding the law education in the country from admission process to the course structure to be registration etc then why there is a need of all india bar examination all india bar examination also by the bar, uh, bar council of india there is a screening examination even in the cases of doctor there is also a program of continuing medical education because these are those subjects where the advancements and growth is at a very fast pace one cannot say sir i have acquired the basic qualification and that is enough for all the time to come for the doctor there is a continuing medical education cme program which are continuously run in fact their reg their registration are now on five year basis after every five years they have to qualify in their continuing medical education and then their registration will be renewed so only to clarify sir you have asked a very relevant question that why bar council of india is conducting these examination this examination is being conducted by the bar council of india it is under their regulation which they have framed as statutorily and it is somehow that even if you are coming from various colleges we just want to doubly ensure that before you are allowed to practice as a professional you demonstrate though you are absolutely right sir because this argument was also raised before the supreme court in a constitution bench in priti ga priti srivastava matter in the year 1999 that a person who finishes his mbbs who finishes his mbbs where he passes 50% then why should he be put to another test again for admission in post graduate course here also the bar council of india said i want to make it doubly sure that once a person is allowed to join the bar to practice as a professional i want to doubly sure including their qualifying exam beside their qualifying exam i want to make it doubly sure but yes it is always open to challenge uh, what is the difference between open to open to challenge what is the difference between technical and accounting background can one exam for any post determine a background where in law can we find their exact definitions the accounts and technical education what is the difference between technical and accounting background can one exam for any post determine a background where in law can we find their exact definitions they they no side definition of any background what they, what are the special discipline they under those very enactment the eligibility conditions are laid down that for seeking admission to those professional courses they are laid down in all those very laws they are not separately laid down if supposing i have to get admission in the llb degree course the regulations are made by the bar council of india the minimum eligibility condition that you must have 45% marks in your uh, school or in your graduation is laid down by the bar council of india it is under the advocate act the regulation which are framed under the advocate act similarly for getting admission in the mbbs or dentistry the the eligibility conditions are laid down through regulation under those very respective enactments 
there are no separate uh, pro separate uh, provisions which i am aware of i am only aware of the provision that wherever these special subjects are provided the admission to those special subjects and eligibility conditions are laid down under those very enact uh, mr pradeep gupta asks yes sir dear children uh meanwhile i will ask has the time come considering the number of engineers and management graduates in the country that the same type of examination be there and registration also process be same perhaps they are right today what i see is let, let us take the case of uh, construction uh, infrastructure development projects where engineers work hand in hand with the architects i do not know what is the reason that architecture activities are subject to their professional conduct being watched by a body whereas there is no such body in the case of engineer i do not know maybe uh, my learned friend is right that in situation a necessity has come in fact there are so many engineering colleges that a large number of colleges have closed down because there are no takers of admission the demand for engineering seats has gone gone down so badly which has forced a large number of colleges to close but yes my friend is right that in so far as aict act which is the only act dealing with the profession of engineering there is no requirement of registration there is no body which uh, which looks after your professional conduct but Perhaps of the of the cuff i will just say in a lighter vein just to break the session <laughs> it is in said uh, once a student goes to an engineering college he asks the chokidar how is this engineering college then the chokidar says this is a very fantastic engineering college i have also studied from here <laughs> so that is the question sir pratik and gupta asked uh, has the time come for the legislature to revisit the aict act 1987 by either diluting it in line with the supreme court judgment especially considering the huge amount of litigation being generated pan india now the answer to that is recorded in the supreme court judgment <clears throat> that the government has already informed the supreme court that they have taken a decision in principle that both the words of pharmacy as well as architecture will be dropped from the definition of technical education in the aict so the amendment is only going to be formal now given that the supreme court has held this with regard to the architect and pharmacy would yeah. not an exam like aor exam which is run by the supreme court itself be defeating its own words should it not be transferred to the bca should it not be transferred to the bca nahi and usme i will tell you something the advocate on record examination is not only the procedures alone it is the trust of the supreme court in those advocates who qualify that exam because you please appreciate i'll just take one more minute in the high court procedures i have worked for a very long time in the high court i've gone i've been the experience of various other high courts and very many very privileged to even come regularly to chandigarh that never ever never ever there is no procedure which i have seen in any high court of the court passing an order only on a mentioning when the matter is not before it i hope i am making myself clear yes yeah, yes yes Uh, the, at the most the court will say all right you file an application let the matter come before us there has to be some listing whereas in the supreme court on the mentioning of aor anything can be done without their matter being before the so uh, there, is a, there is a huge element of trust which is created through this examination of advocate on record it is not that the advocate on record suddenly become some great advocate by passing the examination what was stating was that in the supreme court a lawyer not only gets exposed to the procedures which are being followed in supreme court he also builds up a trust with the bench that is his oral submission will be taken as granted whether it is used or misused is a separate issue but as a concept as the rational behind it the passing of the examination is given to the this retained by the supreme court itself 
now what i was saying was that i have done my llb i have also qualified in the examination needed for my permanent registration now there is an initial registration then you qualify the examination in two years conducted by the bar council of india and then you get your permanent enrollment now if these two are done by every advocate there is no harm or any drawback in the supreme court retaining that facility of the conduct of advocate on record examination which in my understanding in addition to the exposure to the procedure which are followed at the supreme court is also participation in the trust building with the bench the court may be more comfortable to accept the word of an advocate on record than a person though there the difference is like the this entire distinction is slowly and slowly getting uh, marginalized it's getting reduced because there are now so many lawyer who are not advocate on record but are regularly practicing there but there is a rational which had been kept there and there would not be any harm supposing it is given to the bar council of india how will that trust uh, situation which is because one year training is needed at the supreme court so the, if the supreme court conducts an examination and uh, the supreme court examination are conducted by a team which primarily includes uh, senior advocates who are regularly practicing there they and the examination uh, team of the supreme court they undertake they frame the question paper they conduct the examination they check the uh, the answer sheets and then uh, give the result so the judgment which you have referred has yes. the supreme court given at any time bound directions to the supreme uh, to the government to frame these uh, regulations no see there uh, the basic principle is that the court cannot direct the legislature to frame a law or not to frame a law or frame a law in a particular period so they have recorded their uh, uh, the representation which is made on behalf of the central government is that the government in principle has decided that these two words shall be dropped from the definition of the aict uh, for a technical education one question by mr rangat is that mr gugoi had stated that the purpose of five year law course is being frustrated uh, to uh, because the intent was to encourage the new entrants to join the litigation what changes would you suggest for legal education to be a more extensive experience if you ask me i would still prefer 3 plus 3 Three year graduation followed by three year graduation of law. What I did, given that the Supreme Court held that with the regard to the architect and pharmacies, would not would not an exam like you are, which is run by Supreme, no that that has been handled by you. Uh, can we know what is in? Oh, sorry, this is again. If there are no specific regulations by AICT. whether ugc regulations are applicable for the technical institutions that uh, that question would only become academic because the ugc act is also being repealed so there uh, are there are body 53 bo of a subject which are getting covered by another law which is in uh, pipeline it already a statement has come that the ugc act is to be repealed what are your thoughts about a similar registration process for engineering like lawyers considering how majority of the engineers are deemed unemployed in the industry by the industry if the unemployment would not have anything to do with registration registration first of all signifies that you hold a recognized qualification in that subject because unless until you hold a recognized qualification you will not get registered that is number 1 number 2 your professional conduct would be subject to review by those professional bodies uh that is nothing to do with the employment okay that just because uh, yeah it's fine i'm sorry no no go ahead go ahead please go ahead sir so, uh, agastha uh, shilat asks given that the supreme court has held that this with regard to the uh jagjot lali asked what will be the solution if there is a conflict in the regulations of the aict and state technical board the uh, aict will prevail because it is a parliament made law entry 66 of list 1 will apply okay sunshit goel asks currently there is a debate that all entrance exams be done by one single authority national testing agency what is your take on this absolutely perfect that is why the body is created the central government has created this body to achieve this objective 
And what is your take, Aditi Gupta asked, what is your take that the entire purpose of the AOR examination has been frustrated and in practice, AORs only act as a rubber stamp since the purpose was to filter out frivolous cases and reduce unnecessary burden on the Apex Court. The aberrations never prove the rule. These aberrations are there in every walk of life. But there are, there are advocate of the courts who are regular practitioners who follow their ethics and they are the best lawyers who practice in Supreme Court. So if there are certain certain element of abuse, that would that would not show that uh, the concept of AOR is not a relevant or a valid concept. Uh, Ravi Raj asked, after doing the three-year graduation where children come from different backgrounds, which has very less use in three years LLB course, will there not be any five-year co uh, court law uh, course that uh, in fact answers what you have answered already? Right, absolutely right. See, one more thing we must keep in mind that the profession of law subject is always the professional is always benefited if the professional has a habit of reading other subjects. Because the pro process of giving logic and rational by examples for making every judge understand like a layman. If you have knowledge of other subjects, you are more efficient in court. You are more better placed in court. You have more persuasive power and persuasive skills. So it is not ever uh, disadvantageous to not to be well read in other subjects in addition to law. On the other hand, it is always advantageous. That, so if I have done a graduation in some other subject of three years, and my graduation of three years of law, it is not that my earlier education has gone away. As they uh, say in a lighter vein, wherever it is in studying, cycling, swimming, whatever you learn, it ca continues to exist. It will that never, will always help. It will never go waste. Uh, it will be used to some point or the other. So, uh, what is your take uh, on this thing that uh, UGC proposes something and state doesn't adopt those recommendations? What is your take uh, whether it will be binding or not? It will be. See, every law has a very important element of its enforceability. If there is no enforceability, there can't be any law, or the law would be, the law can't be left meaningless and ineffective. The, the, see, please see there are various methods of enforcement of law and enforcement of judgment. It can be execution, it can be contempt, it can be filing of writ petition, it can be other punishment which can be given. Supposing the state, any particular state authority doesn't follow the law made by the parliament, then they get the, the person who acquires the qualification, he will get disadvantage in registration by the central body. Now take the case of drug law, drug law, the drug act. In the drug act, a medicine has to be given by a pharmacist who is registered with the pharmacy council. So you get deprived that it shall become an enforceability because otherwise you will face punishment or even prosecution. Uh, will the AECT have more power over a special act passed by a state legislature, for example, a state law for architecture? State law for architecture will disappear. The moment parliament makes the law, any law which is made by the state, which is in conflict, will get hit by the principle of repugnancy and will disappear. So I don't think we have any questions. Uh, in our format, just like we had discussed, uh, what is your take? What a young lawyer or any other lawyer should do to perform, make his mark, uh, research law, drafting, etc, etc. Because from your vast knowledge, you and your wife both being gold medalists, as an academician as well as a lawyer, you would like to have a take how one can do academically well and thereafter perform. Invariably, they say gold medalists don't perform well. Yes, but you are a, a rare abrasion who are doing exceptionally well. I will tell you what I have been able to learn is that there are certain elements which you can never uh, feel aggrieved because against the Almighty who has given you or you are not given. The brilliance or intellect is the is the uh, confirmed by the Almighty. 
somebody may remain beneficial with him oh kehnde na jive koi rab sutta hoya si jadon tode jamna ho reya si oh bhul gaya si ton ki hoya si something of that <laughs> but but anything with the god has not given you or has not given you much the intellect the brilliance one thing which i have learned very clearly is that to some extent of that deprivation you can make it up by your hard work there is no substitute for it but what is your fi final take how, how, how do you want that the lawyer should go about how they should perform how do they uh, should research how do say drafting when the young client uh, when the client comes to the lawyer how he should go about it he should work hard if supposing i get a new case my endeavor should be first of all i must abreast myself with the law which is involved in that problem i must also go before i even draft to go into the latest judgments on that subject because the moment i see the legal provision and the judgments which are up to date i would have a clear view what should be the draft which i have to prepare what is the ground which i have to take what is the prayer which would be available to me ask for the moon never feel shy and then go ahead work hard and bang it baki rab te chhad do us to pehle jaj te chhad do uh i was reading somewhere it said that law is what the judge decides on that particular day exactly 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 uh, all precedents go into the down the water if you uh, if the judge decides it other way exactly sir that is what so aditi judge. aditi gupta asks advocates registered with the maharashtra bar council with 7 years of practice are automatically eligible what is the reason, reason and logic behind that see please appreciate that uh the centralized laws have come into existence even after the constitution was adopted in certain disciplines the laws have come much later for an example the indian medical council act and the dentist act they require the centralized council as well as council at the state levels now haryana after it became got out of the uh, unified punjab and became a separate state in 1966 for a very long time it did not have its own state medical council so the initial registration is with the state council so the people who used to get mbbs degrees in haryana they would get registered either uh, in uh, punjab or would get registered in delhi because there was no state council so you can't create an itas so there are laws which have come after the constitution having been adopted so whichever state law which were applicable earlier now clearly see your uh, society registration before the constitution was adopted was Ta tamil nadu society registration act because that state had framed its own law prior to the uh, constitution and even the bcci is registered with the tamil nadu society registrar so there are certain state laws which had been framed in those states they worked out those mechanism and when the parliament made laws centrally they kept in mind those statutory uh, provisions and the schemes and the laws which were made by the state and they the people who had got benefits and the registration under that they must be protected and continued this article 372 as of the constitution so whatever laws were made earlier unless they have been repealed they will continue to remain in feet so the maharashtra state council has given a enrollment which is recognized by the centralized act so it is only as a recognition why those people should be deprived uh we are taking a we are breaching the rules for a senior counsel of our high court mr singh wants to ask a question directly though in our format we don't allow but mr singh is so respected in the bar that i am uh, asking him to put it question directly please sir sir this is i am not asking any question good morning this is ip singh advocate sir i just from this platform i just want to thank you and uh, to bring it to the notice of all our members that i happen to be a counsel against you in the drt matter 
in the Supreme Court, and you were straightforward enough to support the cause of the advocates. You came <laughs> forward and directed the ministry to meet the demands of the Bar Association (BRD). So I must thank you for that because of your advice, the ministry had gone to the extent of providing the premises to the DR. and other facilities what happened to those this is only this floor. thing i want to brought what happened to those two top floors which were required uh, to be given uh the floor has that has been uh, taken and the second has, second yes, or third lift uh, two lifts have been installed very good this was one of my cases which i did as an asg additional solicitor general i was appearing for the ministry of finance and the officers as usual were not helpful but i told them that if you don't behave then i will because biradri da sawal si sir sir uh, uh being the name debt recovery tribunal itself is enough the lawyers at chandigarh are already dated for that action of yours we are all obliged on that it's it's a no it, it was a common cause sir i am not i am never felt uh, special thanks being president Nine. Ah, ji. So we were on that DRT part where Mr. Singh was expressing. Ji, no, no, that's very kind of him to remember me. I, and in any case, I would have done it even even when uh, I was not a lawyer. I would have otherwise done it because it was the basic infrastructure facility which was needed. Once you are creating a court there, you must <laughs> build the infrastructure first. <coughs> It was, I think, building which was re-entered, and then they were very confused in giving all the floors to us. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, uh, the same question, which of Maharashtra bar is uh, the question is, isn't it discriminatory that you are allowing Maharashtra but not other people? What is your take? There shouldn't be any amendment on that. Is the discrimination? No, please. That's what I am trying to say. Once the central law takes over, everybody is governed by that law. Once the central law takes over, the earlier before partition, before 1950, before the constitution was adopted, various laws were there in the state framed by the competent state legislature. The parliamentary laws were not there. Once the parliamentary law comes into existence, it uniformly governs everybody, recognizing the rights of some people who had been regulated by the laws. Which were valid and came into existence prior to the constitution. So, therefore, there is no question of discrimination, and there is no question of permissibility of giving that particular status to any other state because that is no more needed. Central law has taken over. Uh, should it not be better for professional conduct is checked by an independent agency? as sometimes there is a professional bias also against within the same uh, within the same profession please tell me please tell me a certified copy of a judgment against which an appeal is to be filed is unfortunately tied up in a separate file in a busy lawyer's office which goes into the rack where thousands of files are there and the delay takes place in filing the appeal can you send it to a bureaucrat to decide or will you send it to an advocate to decide because the bureaucrat say are you mad how can it get tied to another file but in my office it used to happen every day that there are 20000 sarkari files are lying one file one paper unfortunately gets tagged in another file and that file goes to the rack and i can't keep the rack checked up every day for thousands of files it only comes out when that file other file is taken out only then you realize oh my god this certified copy was lying here now you give it to a bureaucrat what will he do or you give it to a doctor what will he do a lawyer would know yes it happens it can happen bona fide right sir so uh, ravi raj asked could you explain the doctrine of implied repeal in uh, more bro broader perspective sir implied repeal is the general law earlier and a special law comes later then even if the special law does not talk about the applicability of the earlier existing general law the principle of implied repeal may become applicable but the insistence generally most of the judgments is that whenever it is a prior special law followed by a general law which is later in point of time 
please do not invoke the principle of implied repeal because the special law cannot be repealed by a perception it must be repealed if it is required to by the specific words of the parliament so it's a question in norman uh, we often discuss though it's of uh, not directly pertinent with the situation our take is that why do we have different like let's assume certain acts have 30 30 days of limitation some 90 to remove that confusion why not make it 90 days flat what is your take on that so that no lawyer knows that it is a straight away 90 days rather than 30 days 60 days 90 days anybody is in so there are various uh, uh, there are various factors which are taken into account when those laws are framed okay it is, and please appreciate just because two views are possible the one view can't be held to be bad uh oh, that's for sure so i don't think that we are having any questions could i ask manmeet to slightly come on the board because she is the direct uh, director and producer in large number of perspective today uh, today she uh, the facilitator facilitator the all good movies are uh, come to a good show only once there is a good director so manmeet was acting as a good director and true to her name she is actually one the uh, man of everybody so i would like just a few words from manmeet how she is finding because i read it somewhere that she is interested to the law i am not very sure that she, she has actually joined it in 3 plus 3 <laughs> karnal bala is sitting okay. there i can see him he is he is aware karnal bala is a is one example who we have learned so much from him karnal bala was in the forge as a judge advocate in the branch i know him from 1988 when i joined the bar and from that day i have been benefited so much from him i have learned so much from him and fortunately today he is a practicing senior advocate designated by the supreme court and wherever uh, there is any army navy or air force case the supreme court judges would call him by name please call bala karnal bala he is known as karnal bala but bala is in any case is god that's true so uh, from on behalf of before we thank you sir we would like to thank the director of the entire show manmeet should come back to the screen uh, a, a few words from manmeet how is her experience on this platform because we are actually thankful to you without you maybe uh, so we know that uh, mr maninder singh is as good as maninder singh bowler he can bowl on any pitch any time he will always be successful what is your take on this session uh, it was very informative in fact i did some research for him yesterday so uh, it was very very informative implied repeal where a cruise principle i was also taking notes sitting right here because whenever he teaches me i always take notes so uh, the it's a very good initiative i think and uh, Uh, i think there is a lot of good that can come even after corona virus ends probably this system of uh, conducting seminar on web called webinars can continue with the most personalized touch so it's great so actually after this entire show when manmeet has put in so uh, so much inputs i have actually realized that uh, the saying is aptly put in here behind every successful man there has to be woman woman need not be a wife it can be a daughter also that's that's, so that's, that's, that's totally true <laughs> I would not okay. have able to do so much if she was not there. No, that is true. You are eight or eight, Gyaram. So thank you on behalf of all uh, the team uh, <clears throat> beyond law CLC. We would like, we would love that you should come on this platform again. Words cannot express the way you have given the ins insight, knowledge of the entire show, the entire judgments brought to a on a escape. a landscape where we could all cherish just like a painting thank you sir we would love to meet keep you keep carry on carry on sir keep it up kindly improve make it more often the frequency can be increased and we can and i i get benefited so much we all get benefited by this in, this exchange and interaction thank so, you very much sir we will have more hours so uh, before we part we again take a promise uh, we part to meet again thank you sir absolutely thank you very much thank you sir thank you